Welcome, I'm Robert Du and you're watching the second part of the flue gas cooling technical information material. In the first part, the story was about a cooling tire or a waste burner in which the 1000 degrees C flue gas was cooled very fast to 220 degrees C with water spray to reduce nitrogen oxide content. But the water with chemicals from the flue gas accumulated on the bottom and destroyed the steel parts. With fluid flow simulations, we showed that the mixing of the flue gas and water vapor was not effective and there was excess water in the system. Let me show some pictures of the ruined cooling tower, which I took on site in mid-August 2009. Under the removed insulation, right across the flue gas inlet, the traces of corrosion can be clearly seen, which proves the flow profile of the simulations made in March. The excess water showed up on this wall first, just under the refractory lining of the turning chamber. Because of the bad mixing, the hot flue gas pushed it to that side of the tower and here it started to etch the steel. Well, our next turn was to massively improve the mixing of the flue gas and the water vapor. We didn't change too much on the tower itself, but we redesigned the positions of the water injectors. Many different versions were created, all based on CFD simulations. You can see the CAD model of a modified version created in an early stage of the project. The injectors were placed to the opposite side of the flue gas inlet, pointing a little upwards to face the gas flow. If you look them from above, you can see how concentrated they are on a fairly small curve of the tower side to improve mixing with this arrangement too. Particle traces are showing just that. Let's take a much closer look and a bit slower. You can see that the water leaves the injectors pointing upwards and to the center of the tower. When it reaches the main flue gas flow, in the middle of the tower, the flow direction of the water spray changes. Traces show how big, sometimes multiple curves, the water particles travel while mixing with the flue gas. Of course, the flue gas also takes part in making such flow patterns. If we show the traces of the flue gas only, we can see how the injected water alters its flow direction. Expecting such an intensive mixing, such an even concentration of the water vapor at the top section of the tower was impossible with the original design. At the end, a fine-tuned injector configuration was built into the redesigned cooling tower, but other improvements were also carried out. New control electronics was developed and it measures the wall temperature of the tower in more than 30 points. The quantity of the water to be injected is set based on the temperature values near the injection points. This way, the system can quickly follow the fluctuations in burner heat load and can add just the necessary cooling water. The reconstruction of the cooling tower was finished at the end of August 2009. The system is running fine without corrosion or excess water. Thanks for watching. See you next time.